Right, we are, we're on, John. Um, yeah, this video, I mean, this is so daft, isn't it? Yeah, what it is. You, what would you divorce your wife? Just because you want to go and live in some shrubbery somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so so you're, you're, like, you're married for like, what, 50, 25 years? But we're gonna, I'm going to ditch you now because I want to live out in the woods. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Where's that in? Scripture. Yeah, exactly. Because the only the only scriptural grounds for a divorce are, of course, fornication, and yeah. of course, Adultery. if the unbelieving spouse is like giving you problems and like you know, and she and you won't convert, then you can leave them at that point. But those are the only two grounds for divorce I'm aware of. Uh, living off grid is not grounds for divorce. Now, even if we've only got two thousand, three thousand subscribers, or forty thousand, whatever. I can see somebody who follows him, as I said to you in the email, John, getting a divorce on that basis. I think somebody would actually be daft enough to do it. Yeah, who knows? Just because they want to go and live in a tree. <laughs> yeah. No, child. She doesn't want anything to do with the off-grid life, brother, and I don't know what to do. Because I just don't think I can handle this city living much more and in town and I'm drowning in debt and you know I'm you know it's not just you saying that the off grid or the, excuse me the economy is going down I'm seeing it I'm seeing the problems I'm seeing the 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 issues that are coming with this country I'm seeing in the the violence building and the people are getting angrier all the time and I can just feel this like there's going to be a civil war in this country I'm getting a little scared. And I, I have a cabin in the mountains, and I've always wanted to go there and live there full time. But my wife, she's just, she, we, she just plainly said, "No, I will not do that. I will never move there." Now, what does the Bible say? Well, back in the book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-one, verse nineteen, it says it's better to dwell in the wilderness than, than with an angry woman, angry and contentious woman. You say, well, then you're saying I should leave my wife. Life, or it's better to live <laughs> in a corner of the roof than with a, a contentious woman in a wide room. Or what, what's that proverb now? Um, it was a uh, yeah, I'll try to find it. Proverbs 11 22, I think. Yeah, is it? Oh, I think it's let me check. Uh, it is. Starting to searching the verse up. It is Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs. Uh, it's, it's Proverbs twenty one nineteen. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see what the New Testament has to say. And bear with me, okay. Don't jump to conclusions. First we'll Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. You might be saved man, and, and you have a lost wife, and she is pleased to be with you, and whatever, then don't divorce her. That's what it's saying there. Verse 13, And the woman which hath an a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Okay? If you're getting along, and if, if everything's okay, then don't leave him. Don't get a divorce. Okay? That's fine. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? The New Testament does give grounds for divorce. Absolutely. If you are married to a lost person, if you're saved and you're married to somebody that's lost and they're not pleased to dwell with you, they don't want anything to do with coming out to a place like this, 
They can't see the danger that lies ahead for this country. The danger of being on grid. I mean, Texas, just this year. Wait, pause Massive there. Power. Pause there. Um. So, on, John. notice how notice how he says um, the danger of not living off grid, and he kind of lumps that in. Okay, the verse he was quoting, I think, was Second uh, Corinthians. What was it or the first Second Corinthians? Or is it First Corinthians seven? I think I forget which one of those. Yeah, First Corinthians seven, which talks about you know uh, departing and and uh, he was uh, the verse was I think yeah it talks about you know First Corinthians seven fourteen for if the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband elsewhere your children are unclean but now is holy verse fifteen but if the unbelieving depart let him depart a brother and sister is not under bondage in such cases but God hath called us to peace unbelieving okay talking about if they're basically you know not they're if they're basically heathen they're lost and they're not you know if they depart from you and leave you then you're not under bondage and also you read the whole context, you know, it's saying that if they're giving you a hard time, then you can leave them. But it's not, it's nothing to do with living off grid or that kind of stuff. Ridiculous. But he's connecting the two, John. He's conflating the two. Like it's connected in some way, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's trying to mix the two together when, when the context of uh, 1 Corinthians 7 15 is about, you know, a lost spouse giving you problems, basically. Yeah. Didn't even know it up here. We didn't feel anything. You say, well, yeah, it's just Texas, just local. What if it becomes national? We're talking about Operation Dark Winter. You can look into that. Military operations for if the power goes down. What are you going to do? You say, well, okay, maybe if everything just goes, goes on. I'm not, I don't get into this doom and gloom conspiracy stuff. Okay, fine. What about civil unrest that we've already seen in this country? People that have lost everything that were living in the city, how their businesses burned down by a bunch of people, be Black Lives Matter, Antifa, whatever other satanic organizations. What about that? You know, um, you say, have you ever uh, advised a brother or sister to divorce their husband or wife? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I've gone through some of the agony with some of the brethren where they tell me they're crying and they're saying, brother, I'm trying everything I can to keep my marriage together. I don't want to divorce. I don't want to go through that. We have children. I don't want them to go through this. But I have a wife that's lost. I have a husband that's lost. What am I supposed to do? If you're not pleased to dwell together and you want to get out to a place like this, you want to get out here where there's peace, ask for the old paths. Okay, pause it, pause it again. Schools. Do you want to get out here if you're a man? Okay, so you see again, he's trying to mix the two together because again, the context of of First uh, Corinthians seven and thirteen to fifteen is about an unbelieving spouse. It's got nothing to do with you living off grid or you wanting to live off grid or whatever. See, he's trying to lump the two together to prove his false doctrine and, and basically try to pressure you and try to guilt trip you into living the exact way he does. You know, when when you know. I agree. You know, living off grid, there's a lot of benefits to that. I, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm not saying you shouldn't live off grid, but you know, not everyone's in the position where they're able to. You know, but he's, so it's just. I mean, just looking at the title of that, John, the Bible doctrine of off gridology. Where's that? Yeah, he, he's trying to make it into a doctrine, and he's taking verses and you know just twisting them to try essentially try to guilt trip his people into living the same way he does and it's working because like some of the people you know they follow him to the point of where they look like him they dress like him they talk like him you know it's a cult of personality you see there's 300 million people in america they can't all go and buy a piece of land and live off grid yeah not everyone's financially able to or just in the position where they're even physically able to yeah i mean i'm sure there's quite a lot of christians a big percentage of them that are relatively poor and I'm sure some of them would love to live off grid and love to get away from all the smut and the sin and immorality that's in the cities, but they're just yeah. they're not in the position they're just not in the position where they can, you know. Uh, it's getting and, worse. And you have a cabin someplace, 
some land and it's a beautiful place. That's where you find your peace at. And you have a wife that's contentious and angry. And she will not change her mind. Leave her. Uh, According to the scriptures. No, it's not, Brian. No, it's not. Uh, the, the scriptures, the context of that verse is about unbelieving spouses giving you a problem. It's got nothing to do with you living off grid or you wanting to go live off grid. Or adultery and fornication. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Matthew uh, 5.32. Matthew 5.32 and Matthew 19.19 19, uh, talk. I think, yeah, Matthew 5.32 and Matthew 19.19 19 gave grounds for, you know, fornication is also grounds for divorce. But living off grid, that's not in scripture. How can he, yeah, I was going to say, how can he say, I mean, where did, I mean, the, the apostles, I mean, you could, you could argue that everybody in the ancient world at the time of the apostles were sort of living off grid because none of them had electricity or any of that. I'm sure a lot of yeah. people live in the country. But even then, uh, to do that, you'd still have to buy land. Yeah, and, and you know, you have to buy land, you have to take care of it yourself. And again, people are just not physically able to, or maybe they're just, you know, uh, they're just not in the, the, the financial position to where they can do everything themselves or, you know, just you don't know their situation. You'd still have to grow food out there because you can't live off uh, pine needles or, or, or uh, hazelnuts or whatever. And okay, you can go hunting, but you can't hunt everywhere in America all year round. It's just crazy, this, John. What about the yeah. people in England? You know, I mean, you can't really go off grid in this country, it's too small. Yeah, and, and you know, I do have, you know, God has blessed me with my family with two cottages and stuff. But again, you know, it's like it's just to just drop everything you do and just live off grid. You know, I, you know, per, me personally, I'll confess, I, I personally would, you know, like to try living off grid. You know, I, I personally would like to do it. But right now, I'm not, I'm not in the position where I can. No, I saw a guy who was living off grid in Canada. He was a businessman. Obviously, he had a fat wad of cash. But the hard work that like that guy went through to build this wooden shack thing out in the middle of the northern Canadian woods, I think. I mean, it was just totally amazing. But it's just pure hard work. You've got to supply everything for yourself. You know, yeah. you know ablutions, uh, food, obviously. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's good there's there's good sides to it. There's downsides to it. I mean, one of the good sides I would see is you're away from all the electronic smog and all the EMF, you know, radio waves and that kind of stuff that are present in the city areas. You're away from all the artificial light and that kind of stuff. So there, there's that side, but then you know, there's also downsides too. I think if I was going to go off grid, I'd just have a big backpack, shovel, and whatever. And just keep traveling all around the place in the mountains somewhere. Find a and, and here, yeah. And here's the thing too: is like Brian. I watched the video. Brian was saying, you know, oh, like living off grid is not you taking all your on grid stuff and trying to make it work off grid. Well, um, living off grid just simply means you're not on the electrical grid. So if you're able to do that off grid, you're still living off grid. You know, it's like, I mean, if I have a flat screen TV and I'm able to make it work off grid, then I'm still living off grid because I'm not on the electrical power grid. So it's like, like, like what he was saying, it's just weird. You want to listen to more of this, John? Sure, we can do more of it. Well, the Bible says, till death do us part. Uh, no, that's a marriage vow. Okay, there, nobody said any marriage vows in the entire Bible. Again, get your traditions and your teachings of men separated from what the scriptures actually teach. Pause. Nobody said, death do us part. That is it. What God has now, taught, let not yeah. run sunder. And, and there's a thing too, uh, you know, I, I will agree with him there. Obviously, the thing of till death do us part and that kind of stuff, that's not scriptural. And, you know, the Bible does give grounds for divorce in some cases. I mean, we're not like this, you know, it's not like this Catholic thing of, oh, you can never do it no matter what. I know, I know Stephen Anderson is big on that and everything. Um, but again, he's trying, he's trying to make it into the thing where oh, if you want to live off grid, you know, he's just really, really clutching at straws to try to make the thing work. 
if you want to live off grid and your wife doesn't just dump her that's it go <laughs> And, and also the thing of too, you know, if your wife's a Christian, you know, you're the head of the house if you're the man. So, you know, she, she doesn't like it. Tough, you know. Yeah. That, that, that's not that selfish, isn't it? Because, you know, when when she gets married, she's agreeing to submit to her husband. So she, oh, she yeah. doesn't want to li- wasn't want to live off grid, you know, and she should have thought about that before, you know, getting married. Yeah. I mean, if they were already living off grid, or one of them was, and the other person agrees to it, that's fine. But if you weren't living off grid initially, and then one of you decides to, I don't see the obligation on the other person to, uh, I don't know. Not a situation I'm ever going to be in anyway, but Yeah, me, me neither. I, I do plan to just remain celibate, just like the Apostle Paul did. I'd love to go and live in northern Canada somewhere. Yeah, I, I live in like the southern part of, of you know Ontario, Canada. But you know, the some of the parts like by the Great Lakes and stuff, it's actually pretty cheap to live up there. So I might I might move up there, who knows? Yeah. What's that? Oh, it was my chair. It was just making a squeaking sound. <laughs> it's a vow that is said. And then that whole thing there. Again, it's a Roman Catholic thing. Right? Get that thing figured out. Right? God's called you to live in peace, brother, sister. And mostly brethren that I'm talking to right now. If you have a wife that's some high maintenance city woman and she's lost and she wants nothing to do with you going out there and living out in nature, leave her. Okay, pause it. Plain and simple. If you have children especially that you need to think about, and uh, they'd rather be out with you out there than whatever, well, you might have a problem with the courts and oh, things. Come on, it's going slow on me. Yeah. Okay, so again, he's, he's being deceptive. He keeps trying to mix the two together. Oh, she, if she doesn't want to, if she's lost and she doesn't want to live off grid, divorce her. That's not what the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 7. Yeah. It, it just says unbelief. It doesn't say anything about... Yeah? yeah? Go ahead. I mean, if we've got children... That, I mean, he said just leave her. But, I mean, if, if you've got children between you... You just, you just can't pick up and leave them. No. Uh, continue, you can, you can continue the video. Okay, John. I realize it's a satanic court system that we have in this country, but um, you would do well to get away and to come out to a place like this for safety and for sanity. That's another thing. Um, if you're content living on the grid, again, I don't, I don't care. People want to live on the grid. I'm not, I'm not looking down on you or whatever else. People want to do that. That's fine. I understand. But, uh, there's a there's a very special thing about being off grid. There's a very special thing about doing things for yourself, and being self sufficient. Uh, self sufficient, Brian. Who paid for all that? Yeah, who who says the one who lives off donation money? I mean, he got four thousand dollars, and we don't know how much other money he got. Yeah, and, and this has come from a guy who made a forty minute video, which you know has been deleted, obviously, from his channel, but made a 40 minute video lecturing his followers about why they're not giving him enough money and why they have to start sending him more money. You know? Yeah. Self-sufficient. Yeah. Well, all your subscribers are paying for it. Yeah. I remember that video vaguely. I think it was about yeah. two years or so ago, maybe a bit more. I'm not sure. I, I think the, uh, the, was it, what's that channel called? The, the cult Denley or cult archive channel. I think that channel, uh, re-uploaded it or something. Yeah. Oh, Brian. Oh, um, it's a real blessing. It's a lot of hard work, but uh, the rewards are just out of this world. Yeah, Brian, the people that gave you that money were doing the work. You just sat there collecting it in your PayPal account or whatever. Yeah. I mean, he used to work. He was lumberjacking or something. 
He would sell art too, I think. Yeah, well, uh, and uh, he was doing uh, lathe work, you know, making wooden bowls and things like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, continue. They really are. So that's going to be it for this study. Hope it's been a challenge to you. Um, you know, you have one life to live. Don't waste it. Say that one more time. You have one life to live. Don't waste it. If you're a man and you want to live out in a place like this, make it happen. Okay? Uh, if you're a young okay. man, you're single. Yeah, make it happen. Okay, and again, is not everyone's in, in the position where they can, quote, make it happen. You know, I'd, I'd love to make it happen for myself, but I'm not in that position. Yeah, but his implication is if you're a man and you want to live out here, Therefore, if you don't want to live out here, you're not a man or something. I don't know. Yeah, you can you can kind of see why he, he would make that kind of implication. It's like, you know, it, you know, and, and again, you know, it's like, you know, he lives off donation money. And I'm not saying he doesn't work, but a lot of the work he does are just his personal type of stuff. You know, the money he gets donations, so it's very easy for him to say these kind of things and make all these like, you know, make all these demands and that kind of stuff. Because he doesn't have a nine to five job he has to go to and, you know, work and that kind of stuff. So. Um, you do well to look for a wife that is interested in nature. If you meet a girl and she just has to be taken to the finest restaurants and she doesn't like your car or your truck or whatever, because it's just not new enough and she just has to be just perfect. And she, you know, I wouldn't look okay. at Oh, but brother Brian, she's really good looking. Um, if if a girl was like that, I wouldn't marry her. You know, if she was just that picky, I want. If she was that picky, I wouldn't marry her. You know. Yeah. Because like typically you learn. Because typically, if you spent years dating, spent years as a girlfriend boyfriend, you would typically pick on pick up on that kind of stuff because it would be displayed in her. So you'd know, okay, don't marry her. You know. Yeah. I don't care. She'll make your life miserable. There's a lot of men out there that can testify to the fact that they uh, fell in lust with a woman, maybe even fell in love with her. Excuse my sarcasm, <laughs> but uh, it's hard for me. It comes out so naturally. Uh, <laughs> they fall in love with some girl. She's beautiful. They think, wow, I can't believe she's giving me the time of day. I think this is going to be great to be married to her. They're married for a while and she makes this guy's life miserable. She's never content with anything. She's a high maintenance woman. And they just look for happiness all the time. Let's go to this vacation. Hey, Let's buy me this new car. Buy me this new fur. Well, some of them. You know. Okay, so he says yeah. he basically is like making it seem like the man just gonna like how tow and just submit to whatever the woman says. But earlier he was saying be a man and just, you know, make your own decisions or whatever. Um, so if you're going to be a man, then if I, if that was me in that situation, I would just put my foot down and say, listen, woman, this is what, that what I say goes, you know, I'm the man of the house. So it's like, you know, he's kind of contradicting himself. Yeah. I mean, if I had a wife and she was just, you know, being nasty and just picky, but like that, I would just put my foot down and say, Hey, you know, I mean, if, if she's claiming to be a Christian too, I would just put my foot down and say, Hey, you know. Uh, this is what the word of God says. And, you know, I'm the man of the house and, you know, what you're doing is on scripture. You're not supposed to just, you know, try to, you know, treat me like that and just, you know, try to control me. You know, it's called being a man, like Brian was talking about earlier, but now he's contradicting himself. Yeah. But as you said, you find out all that stuff, don't you? Yeah. I mean, if you spend years, yeah, if you spend years dating and, and girlfriend, you find that stuff out, you know? Yeah. I don't think I'd want to date a woman unless I was best friends with her first. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I don't know. Take me out to this place to eat. I want to go to the opera. I want to go to the theater. I want this. I want this. I want that. And if you're one of those types of women, let the word of God rebuke you. You look at this book and you say, Wow. Women that are at ease, careless women. I think I qualify for that. 
you know, maybe our family would be better off if I let my, my husband have his wish of living out in a place like this. Maybe I'd be better off walking through the woods. Maybe our children would be better off growing up away from the city. So I don't have to hey, worry about time out there in the bad name. Um, if the, the woman's not a Christian, then she doesn't care what the word of God says. Because no. earlier he was, he was, the argument was, oh, if they're not a Christian and they're unbelieving. So if they're not a Christian, then, you know, they, they won't care what the word of God says about how a woman's supposed to behave. So I, I don't know what he's trying to argue for. neighborhood and getting in with the wrong crowd and whatever else maybe we should come out to the nature a natural area and whatever else god help me to be tough help me to be able to, to see the beauty out there in a wild flower rather than bought flowers from a florist someplace my husband has to buy me a dozen roses how about a dozen wild flowers that your children pick for you and bring and say here you go, Mom, I love you. How's that for a blessing? Hey, Mommy, I bought you some, I brought you some of these wild berries I picked out here. I found some raspberries. They're, they're blooming, Mom. You have to come and see. Come on, Mom, you have to look. The wild strawberries are growing right now. I mean, the trouble is it's making it sound like Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, it is. I mean, and plus, like, try, try, try saying this while you're working a nine-to-five job, you know, it's like it's not as easy as it sounds to just pick up and just drop everything and leave and go off give a good level in the woods you know try putting yourself in like in my situation where you know you gotta work a nine to five job you gotta you know do your stuff you know it's very again it's very easy for him to say these kind of things when you don't have a nine to five job and where you just get donation money and live off that yeah it's too uh I mean, he's supposed to be waiting on the Lord, not waiting on people turning up in the countryside to live with him. Yeah. It's a blessing. But you'll never get to see it if you're just on grid, looking at the things of man. You'll never see those things. Unless you live out in the country and you can, you know, enjoy some of it. So, kind of an interesting study here. But uh, one that I've been on my mind for a while, um, and and yeah, just, it was just, it was just guilt tripping people. Young people out there because there's a lot of young people that watch. Totally it wasn't it wasn't edifying. It was just guilt tripping people into you know why you should live off grid. And again, like I said earlier, you know I'm sure there are plenty of people who would love to live off grid. I myself would love to live off grid, but they're not in that position where they're able to. They're not like Brian where they just live off donation money and just can. Do it pretty much do anything they want. You know, a lot of us have nine to five jobs. We go to work every day. You know, if we were to go live off grid, we'd have to put notices at our jobs that we're quitting. We have to go find another job. I mean, it's not it's not that easy when you when you have a nine to five job. But when you're like Ryan, you don't have a nine to five job, then it's very easy for him to just you know go but buy this property, move there, move here. The thing is, for him to get that land, he's had to rely on government. Paperwork, lawyers. Um, yeah, he's got to pay tax. I don't know what the score is over there. I don't know if he has to pay a sort of basic minimum tax if he's on on whatever every year to the uh, IRS or whatever. He's got to pay something on the land. I don't know what the the, the law is regarding land over there. Uh, but in one way or another, he's still reliant. On government, if he doesn't pay whatever it is he's supposed to pay every month or every year, we'll just take that land off him and boot him off. Yeah, you know. And, and, and by the way, who is paying his taxes? It's his donation. People are sending donation money. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming taxes. I don't know, John, because if he's not working, you see, he's got a house, he's got a property in a town, so there must be some sort of. Oh, I don't know how it works over there. There must be some sort of payment he has to make. I, I know here here in Canada, well, particularly Ontario, uh, like you, you can't pay taxes unless you're making a certain amount of money each year. So oh, if I was making, if, if he was if he was in Canada and he was making below that amount each year, then like legally he won't be required to pay taxes. But right. Well, it's not yeah. even anything, is he? Yeah. 
Yeah. Let me get it straight. Easy, John. It's just not that easy. Yeah, it's just not that easy. I mean, it's e especially when you have a nine to five job, it's not that easy just to pick up and just leave and drop everything you do and go, you know, uh, live well, off grid. You could do it, John. I wouldn't advise it. If you've got the survival skill, just get a big backpack and you fit an outfit with all your survival kit and food and tent and whatever. Uh, you know, and just go off up to northern Canada or to the North Pole or somewhere. Or Alaska. <coughs> I'll just find a cave somewhere. Yeah, so or just set, go camping or something like that. Around here to get food and water, you've still got to be reliant on certain things. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to hear any more of this? Yeah, we can do a little bit more. It's this ministry, and uh, you come to me for advice, and I appreciate that. Uh, I can give you a lot of good sound advice, and and both pro and con. You know, don't do what I did, in other words, some in some ways. But um, watch out for the bushcraft thing. Watch out! Watch out for the bug out bag and the and the uh, survival. Uh, when Teotwaki happens and stuff hits the fan and all this other stuff, here's what you do. Um, how many of those channels that do this bushcraft survivalism type of stuff, seven day wilderness trip, how many of them fled the city when the cities were locked down? I don't think any of them. Well, you know, they're going to, they're going to run out in the wilderness. They're going, they can make it out here. Okay. Uh, they can make a, a campfire with uh, sticks rubbing together and whatever else. Well, I have a wood stove right over here. I can go and get warm. You know, um, bushcraft is okay, but I just I always find it kind of a little bit goofy. You know, actually, you can, you know, get in your vehicle and drive to some place and even fly into some place whenever, and you can survive for a week. And then they go right back to the city again. But don't worry, because when things fall apart, they're going out there. They're going to survive when everybody else is dying. No, they won't. Uh, if you're a young person and you have some kind of a backpack with all kinds of survival goodies and, uh, you know, a, a tent and a water purification tablets and a and a, a knife that's this long or something like that and, and whatever that you can whack trees down and make a survival shelter and you got your paracord and you get – I've studied all this stuff, you know. And, and you have all these things that you can survive. You're not going to. Okay, it makes no sense. If you're really about survival up here, then you'd already realize the danger of where you live and you'd leave. Yeah. All right. And you say, um, well, how do I get again, started? Again, it's like people would love to do that, but they're not in that position where they can, where they can just, where they live off donation money and just get donations from their followers and just can just pack up and leave and go here, go there. You know, it's guilt tripping his followers. If they do a full on lockdown, or if it does go pear shaped as Brian thinks it might do with civil war and all that, these people trying to get out of town with the backpacks are not going to be able to manage to get out of town anyway. Yeah. And it's funny too because it, go ahead. Wouldn't be able to cross the nearest bridge, the military would be out there. Yeah. So, the other people that kill them for what they've got, especially when there's food shortages. Yeah. They'll just shoot you. Mm hmm You know. Go on, John, sorry. I, I was going to say that, you know, that, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> Darn it. About getting out of the... People haven't got enough money. Paracord, and you get. I've, yeah, yeah. I, I was saying, you know, like people, they don't, you know, they may not be able to afford it, or they could just not be in the right physical condition, or you know, it's just like, they, you know, they can't just pick up and move here and move there. You know, it's like, you know, because like a lot of us don't just live off donation money all day. You know, I would be very curious to know how much is raking in every week. Yeah. 
That would be interesting. And I'm also curious to know how much of it is actually being used for like ministry related stuff too. Well, who's it ministering to? Uh, who's it distributing to the saints? What is it distri making distribution to the saints? Is it? Yeah, I mean, you know, apparently, supposedly he has like this uh, stack of King James Bibles in his in his library. How would you give those out to people? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, give them out for free or something like that. Or, or help somebody out who's obviously struggling because a lot of people haven't been able to either go to work or they've lost the job or they're or whatever. I've never heard of him sending money to uh, Naughty Accountable KJV or Divided Minorities or or Jacob breaking his own money. He's got a massive donation button on his website. Yeah. I mean, I'm, on my website too, I have like a donation money, but it's like a donation button, but it's like really small and small text, you know, because like I'm not all about money, you know, if you, you want to donate... <laughs> Every page. I mean, what? He's got a big button on every page. Yeah, I mean, at the bottom, I have like a tiny little text that says, hey, feel free to donate at PayPal. I mean, people are led to give. You know, that's great. But, you know, yeah. because the thing is, too, is that, you know, I don't like, you know, because I'm not sure if JT has a job or not. But, like, you know, Brian and JT, they depend on the body of Christ for money, which is I don't depend or rely 100% on the body of Christ for money. You know, so that's why I don't have to make a big deal about getting donations. No, because... we should be doing yeah really i mean it's great to be able to but paul didn't survive didn't take money from the body of christ yeah he, he was working i mean he he was making i don't know what he was doing Acts, Acts, Acts chapter 18 verse th Acts chapter 18 verse 3 says paul was a tent maker yeah and he still was to this last day he was probably making tents when he was in jail in rome yeah you know, Paul, Paul, Paul worked. He had a job. He wasn't just, yeah. you know, taking money from people. Well, he made his own living. He says so. Paul does. Yeah. Uh, you know, he makes provision for his. I think he had a son, didn't he, Paul? He. Uh, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think he was married. Wasn't he? Oh, Peter. Sorry. Yeah, it was Peter. Yeah. 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 You, you can continue the video. studied all this stuff you know and and you have all these things that you can survive you're not going to okay it makes no sense if you're really about survival up here then you'd already realize the danger of where you live and you leave all right and you say well how do i get started as a young man well uh get a vehicle that you can pay for okay a vehicle that's paid off you have to work hard work at a, a job and whatever else Okay, pause it. Many years worked at a toxic factory and whatever. I actually lost my. Yes, exactly. Work a job, you know, which a lot of his. I mean, I work a job too, and you know, get a vehicle. Yeah, well, who is paying for his vehicle? Who? What money is he using to pay for his vehicle? His his numerous vehicles that he has, his subscribers' money. You know, if I ever buy a vehicle, I'd be using the money that I earned through working, and I've earned my wages properly. And I'm not saying that you know donations to ministry is not proper i mean obviously it is difficult to support a ministry financially but yeah. you know i actually work in physically hard and, and earn my wages you know but i would never i mean why would you want to buy a vehicle because you're going to dump it when you once you get to the uh, the forest and whatever yeah i, I would just get a bus <laughs> <laughs> and and not, to, not to mention too how brian doesn't just have one vehicle he has like numerous vehicles you know oh, yeah, that big ambulance it was it an ambulance or a, it was an ambulance yes he, he had a school bus too or something like that it's like you know okay a 10 ton truck or something yeah 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 he had that big he had it on his off-grid channel before he deleted it he had like this big military truck or something yeah and he, ha he has like eight. He has like all these ATVs. You know, um, uh, what are those things called? Those snow things, those ski doos, or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. He has all these things. You know, he has all these. Um, he's got. He's got everything. And again, who is paying for that? It's subscribers paying for that. You know. I, I've never donated. I was thinking about it. I think a couple of years ago. Uh, 
the Yeah, I, I I never I never sent Brian any money because I figured you know he's already got a lot. He doesn't you know need me to like send him one dollar or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, yeah. It, 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 if somebody had said to me, "I want that dollar back because blah blah" or something, I would probably have given two or three dollars and just not. I wouldn't have spent a thirteen and a half minute video. <laughs> whinging about paying a dollar back john yeah and and, and the thing is too J J what jt failed to realize was that me asking him, i could care less about that dollar i was just trying to see if, if he'd be a hypocrite i was my whole, whole point of doing that was like again i could care less about the dollar i was just trying to see if he be, if he's a hypocrite or not because if i'm supposedly lost now then what are you doing taking money from a lost person so give me my money back and you know he yeah. did prove he's not a hypocrite but that's the whole point of that the proof that see if he's, if he's gonna be a hypocrite or not take money from a quote unquote and take money from a quote unquote lost person why would he even put you to an open shame anyway well not an open shame but i mean why would he i mean he tried to make you look uh stupid really. yeah jt does i mean he, he's got he's got, he's got a lot of pride yeah I mean, like, you know, it's funny because, like, he in his video, he called me, he did all kinds of personal attacks on me. Like, in the description, he called me, like, all these personal attacks. But then he gets mad. Uh, what's the guy's name? From Time for Truth Ministry, doing personal attacks on him. Yeah. So it's like, he's, he's a hypocrite, you know? Yeah. And, and just, like, you know, I, I think the problem is, too, is that, you know, he's a young kid who just, you know, thinks he knows everything and thinks he's, you know, qualified to be a minister and everything. Um which again is just proving my point that I don't think these young kids ought to be getting into ministry because they're just they're not qualified and just often they're very prideful and won't take correction. I mean, we saw that with Aaron Deering. You know, just, they they just think they're always right. Yeah. I I was thinking about that this morning actually. You know, all this apology stuff. It's all well and good to apologize, and that's fine. I don't despise somebody for apologizing, but the thing that usually occurs to me is. Well, where's the repentance you know and also the fact of too how whenever aaron would apologize i mean because again this is he's, he's this is not the first time he's apologized this is probably the third or fourth fifth fourth or fifth time he's apologized for like the same thing which is like railing against people falsely accusing people and then the last couple times he's apologized he'll apologize he'll go off youtube and then like a month or so later he gets back on youtube doing the same thing so he doesn't say who he's i mean he did that latest apology who, who, I mean, not that I was all that bothered, but I mean, who was he apologizing to? The Denlinger crew? The Fenningers? Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know. You can play the video again. Appendix as a result of it. All the toxicity I breathed in and, and things. Bad situation. You can watch my videos what I, you know, what Brian Denlinger did for a living, I think is what it's called, share my testimony in my working life. Um, but you get a, get a good vehicle, um, maybe even some kind of a, a camper or something like that, or buy an old ambulance or buy a van or something. Look at the people who live out of their vans, live out of their vehicles. Uh, do that. Okay. Get, become independent. Start traveling to nature areas. See what kind of okay. area best suits you. Look. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you let them uh, park their van on your driveway. You know, considering the huge amount of land land you have, Brian. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, just how, how arrogant. Oh, go live in your van. Go live in your van. Okay. So I should just quit my job and just drop, stop, stop doing everything and just go live out in my van. Okay. I mean. And again, you know, like like look at all the land he has. All that back there is all his land, you know. I don't know how much land he's got. There's no way. Yeah. And and and, the, and then yeah, he won't let anyone come visit him. He doesn't, you know, take phone calls or emails or anything, you know. And it's like I remember one time I was on one of his live streams. I asked him, "Hey, can I message you on Skype? You know, can I add you on Skype?" And he he was like, "Well, you know." I don't know about that. It's like, but I thought you're a minister. Why is it so hard to get in contact with someone who's in ministry? You know, and, and then you write him letters, and then he like never responds. So for like months and everything, and you know. And the thing is, um, I mean, if you've got a vehicle that you can reasonably live in, 
you've got to park it somewhere, you've got to keep warm or cool. You've still got to provide pool, you've still, uh, food and fuel. Um, and then you've got to make, make sure you're not going to get in trouble with the law. Yeah. Or if your vehicle breaks down, you need some cash. Yeah. You know, to buy a spare part. You know, I mean, it's not like it was in the ancient times, John. I mean, even then. Yeah. Like, and plus, everything today is a lot more expensive, too. You know, to live somewhere, it's expensive. I mean, back back in, like, the 1960s and that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, someone like me with the, with the kind of job I had, I could actually buy a lot of good stuff. But now it's, like, you know, it's, it's really expensive to buy stuff and to live live places and everything. You know, it's not like it was when, when he might have been growing up. Who knows? And land ownership is always very tenuous anyway, John, because I believe they've got the zoning laws of something over there, as they have over here. Completely yeah. Purchased. The government can boot him off his land at any time they want. If they find minerals or whatever, or gold under his, under his house, uh, he's gone. That's it. He'll lose it. The government can still take his land off him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, you know, it's like, he's got all this land. How come, he, how come, you know, it's like, I, th I think like there was one person that like visited him like years ago. And that was like the only person I ever can like, remember him mentioning that actually like came and visited him, you know, from his YouTube channel. It's like, yeah. I think Max Bauer did. Yeah. yeah I think Max Bauer tried to at one point, but then he, uh, there's this guy, I think his name was like Joshua Alvarez or something, just you know, this other guy who was kind of around my age, I think, but he uh he apparently was what was a used to be a subscriber of Brian, but then he, you know, got kicked out or whatever. But he actually at one point actually visited Brian in person at one point and you know, he, he came to Brian's house and whatever and everything. But yeah, that's the the one person I know of from his subscriber base that actually like physically was able to visit Brian, you know. I wonder how many People have left off that. I mean, what's happened to uh, Matthew Groen? I haven't seen him around Brian's channel lately. Yeah, I wonder what happened with him, you know? I mean... I mean, the, the, the people I seem to remember commenting on Brian's channel don't seem to be there anymore. Yeah, a lot of them seem to be like new faces now. Yeah, you, you can continue the video. Look at your ancestry. Uh, if you're a Northern European, move north, by all means. If you're of African descent or something like that, well, go with your ancestral things. And study what people did in Africa. You know, it's a, there's a great a lot of culture over there. People live very sustainably. Even today, a lot of the people in Africa don't live with electricity. They live out in the plains and out in the everything else with a lot of dangerous animals around. There's some good wisdom over there. Oriental, learn those things. Native American, whatever. You know, learn what your ancestors have done and start out basic and then build up. You can do that. But don't fall into the, the trap of thinking that somehow you're part of the off-grid mindset or the, the bushcraft mindset because you watch the videos on YouTube. Uh, that doesn't do it. Um, you should be inspired enough to say, hey, I'm going to come to a northern area or I'm going to go out into the woods and I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. You have to get started doing it because if you just sit there and, and become a passive partaker, uh, you'll never amount to anything. Just being very plain with you. And uh, if you're a woman and, and you say, you know what, I'm really convicted right now. I would like to live a, a more natural life and whatever and move out to an area and things, talk it over with your husband. Start to say, you know what? I think I could live a little bit tougher than what I'm living. And start putting it into practice. Use less water. Um, get a sawdust toilet. Five-gallon bucket with a toilet on it, and you get sawdust, and you go to the bathroom in there. You know, Start to do some, implement some things that will work for you off-grid. Find ways that you can cut back on refrigeration. Um, there's so many things that you can learn, and it's, it's okay, a pause. very long life. It's it's a. So you're saying cut back in refrigeration. What if you have like a family, like five or six kids to feed? You can't just cut back on refrigeration for that, you know. 
yeah, you can continue. It's a great way to live. So uh, experiment with some solar power. Just buy some small solar type of stuff and set it up and whatever and charge your lights and, and things. And, it's all money. You know, and yeah. some advice I'd like to give, um, and that is if you do decide to move to a northern environment, do not move in winter. Okay, if you want to be off grid, don't ever do that. Okay, do what the ancient people did. Come in the early spring and then prepare for winter. Okay, you don't come in the winter and say, we're here, let's make it happen. It doesn't work. Never has, never will, unless you're moving on grid. All right, there's a bunch of, of things I could share with this whole thing. I was actually going to do a whole seminar uh, on the off-grid issue, and I just, you know, it's, it's, it's going to take me probably a, a month or two to get everything done with all the editing and everything, all the other work I did, and I thought, well, I have other things that are more pressing and more important right now, but um, certainly if, if, if somebody's interested, you can contact me and, and whatever, write us through the post office or you know, or okay, pause. Your comments and say, hey, you know, could I have some questions? Could you this? Could you talk? So, so contact him. So you write him a letter, and then you know, chances are I won't get responded to for months or whatever. And then you write him a comment, you know, and then chance. I mean, he he rarely responds to his comments. You know, he does occasionally, but he he almost never responds to the comments. So it's like, you know, oh, go contact him. How? You know, it's it's hard to get in contact with the guy. He does. He doesn't give his email. He doesn't take phone calls or anything. Doesn't let you, let you add him on Skype or anything, unless you're like within his like little you know circle of of uh, you know uh, like people that he kind of likes the best or whatever. Uh, how is he busy? I mean, this week since uh, Monday gone, he's done about three hours, maybe four hours of video. What yeah. did you do with the uh, other? What's he doing the rest of the time? Yeah, it's like he's busy with what? You know, like what, what's he what's he doing? I mean, if he had a nine to five job or if it was just maybe like, you know, he had a job on the side of ministry. Yeah, I can understand why. But it's like, you know, aside from personal stuff, like what does he do? You know, like what does he do all day? He goes around looking for mushrooms and, you know. Because like he'll 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 like say because you know I don't I don't call Brian lazy because he does do a lot of physical work I do understand that but it's like a lot of the work he does are not like ministry they're just personal stuff you know personal projects you know so it's like yeah well over winter he wouldn't be doing much anyway yeah I so. uh, yeah I mean uh, during the summer he'd be like you know getting firewood and everything and collecting um, just stuff to prepare for the winter but. You know, it's like other, you know, his work that he does is not like related to his ministry a lot of the times. And there's the other thing that he forgets, or maybe he hasn't. Uh, when you've got children, they have to be educated. Yeah, there's that too, you know. And it, it's law that they have to go to school, isn't it, in America? Well, well, legally, they don't have to go to a school, but just, they, legal, they just have to legally be educated, basically. Yeah. I mean, but here in Canada, obviously, uh, you have to like, like from I think it's uh, preschool age until you're 18, you have to like legally you have to receive an education in some way, and then once you're 18, then at that point you you legally don't have to be in, be in school anymore, but or or have an education, but you know, like by law in most countries you have to have an education from a certain age, like usually until you're 18. Yeah. about this or that in other videos well maybe i'll do that um but there's a whole uh a whole i don't know what you'd even call it a whole source of wisdom out there ancient wisdom ancient cultures and things um that you can learn from and really make this life out here enjoyable um so that's going to be it I do thank you for your time, those of you who have watched, and I do pray that um, you would think about this. And uh, if the Lord is leading you to live a more sustainable life, more off-grid, an easier life in terms of uh, easier for your health and whatever else, it's, it's harder, it's much harder, um, but it's so much more rewarding 
if you're a woman and you're convicted by this and you're saying, you know what, I'm keeping my husband from being off grid. You know, if you're a man and you have a wife that's lost and she's saying, I don't want anything to do with this and, and I'll never change. Follow the Bible, follow the New Testament. It says, leave her. You're not under bondage in such cases. Okay, pause. That will be it. Thank you very much for watching. So it's like it's like he, he keeps saying leave her, leave her, leave her. Well, again, the context of of uh, First Corinthians seven fifteen or thirteen and fifteen is not about living off grid. So he keeps trying to just hammer on that passage to try to make it make it apply to being off grid, which is not what it, at all what it's saying. Why is he doing that? The Bible doctrine of off gridology. That's yeah, weird. Oh. Yeah. I guess that's the end of his bit. What? Brian to his cabin now. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have the going on too. I, I got to get some stuff to do, but I might, I might be back in like 30 or so minutes. Who knows? Okay. Um... Yeah. Oh. If I'm back, I'll, I'll join back on if I, if I get back in time. Can't think of anything to talk about at the moment. Um, I was going to yeah, talk we about can... this. Ed Benning, the crew. Yeah. If, if you so, want, we could just stop. If you want, we could just not stream, and then we'll, we could do another stream later or something. Yeah. Okay, then, John. Yeah, we'll do that. Drop us an email, and then. Yeah. All right, John. All right, see ya. Bye.